Okay, uh, this is Fiscal Policy in Hawaii, uh, part two in Talking Tax with Tom Yamachika. Hi, Tom. Hi, Jay. Tax Foundation of Hawaii. We think about fiscal policy here in the show. We think about tax. And today we want to talk about, uh, you know, part two of our discussion from last week. And let me, let me frame it a little bit, Tom. <clears throat> okay, so we haven't paid, uh, the state has not been able to pay uh, the arrearage on the employee's retirement fund, I don't know what, $10, $12 billion. Um, people estimate that the cost of dealing with repatriating or otherwise taking care of the homeless is another mm, $10, $15 billion, and maybe that's un undoable anyway. You know, it's, we have more per capita than any other place. We also have more credit card charging. We have the highest credit card balances, um, you know, in the country, and we are Interesting that we are a mono economy. It's all about tourism. There is nothing else. Efforts from the Burns administration on forward to Caetano were to build a tech industry, to build an alternative economy, all failed. Failed. Okay. And now, and, and in, in the odd years, Linda Lingle brought the tax incentive for technology down. She brought it down. And by 2010, it was gone, gone. Uh, and the tech industry has shrunk since then, I'm sorry to say. Um, so, yeah, there's a, there's a glimmer here and a glimmer there, you know, there are incubators and accelerators and whatnot. A lot of that helps people offshore, it doesn't really help developing an industry here. So then we have the risk of extreme weather uh, in climate change. We have the risk of tsunami, our yeah. background here. Yeah, right That's there, what we're looking right at. there, right there. Um, <clears throat> and so the, the, the fragility of a mono economy is accentuated. Um, and, and so yeah, and then right, add to that the, 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 uh, the fact that you know, the National Tax Foundation just came out earlier this month with a report saying $100 uh, is so worth $84.39 $84 here, worst in the country. Yeah, yeah. Worst we in, have our anywhere own special in the country. inflation. That's right. Yeah, it doesn't go as far. So people have to work harder at lower salary. We have lower salaries here that have to work harder. Um, to, to, to buy what a dollar would buy on the mainland. This is not so good. This is not so good. Yeah. At the same time, you know, we're, we're, uh, we, we're, not, we're not concerned about building any alternative industry. So uh, the only way the government can get money is through taxing the existing tax base. Am I right? Taxing and more taxing. So they, uh, you know, they're, they're looking at different types of taxes, escalating the taxes that are there, um, replacing, you know, one tax type with another. Uh, for example, the Department of Transportation, they want to replace the gas tax with a road usage charge. We've already increased the, uh, uh, the estate tax that happened last year. We uh, increased the income tax the year before. Uh, just more and more things that, that help bring us down. Yeah. So the middle class gets, you know, hollowed out. We're not even talking about the federal effect here. The middle class gets hollowed out. You get a greater uh, disparity of income. You get more homeless who can't handle it, even if they're working. Um, and you get more government services that fail because the government doesn't have enough money to carry on its mission. Um, this is the, you know, this is kind of like the story of, of Puerto Rico, how it all of a sudden you know, found itself, uh, what, $80 billion in debt, and then the storm happened. What a combination of things. That could happen here. That could happen here. It's possible, you know? yeah. You know, so, and then you, you, know, you say, well, if I was a kid and I graduated high school, um, would, I, would I go to college here or would I go to college on the mainland? Or if I was a kid and I graduated college here, would I stay here or go to the mainland? If I was a businessman here uh, trying to make a business and finding it, hard, a lot of bureaucracy and red tape of all kinds, you know, I'd think about going to the mainland. And this is the most interesting thing. If I was a businessman or a business on the mainland, I'd think real careful now about coming to Hawaii. We, do, we have no idea, there are no stats at all about the telescopes that might have come here, except for all this trouble on Mauna Kea. And they're not going to come here. So, you know, the consortium you know, whether it can weather this storm, um, the protesters, whether they're going to insist on, you know, the destruction of the project and other telescope projects. Um, this is a global theater. People see what we're doing. They, they, yeah, and the picture isn't good. 
I mean, we're on the world stage because of this telescope fiasco. The, uh, the picture that's going out to the world is not so great. Yeah. So if I'm, if I'm a, tele a, a telescope consortium involving countries and universities who control billions of dollars on projects of this nature, it seems to me, and, and I'm reasonably well informed about what is happening here, at the top of Mauna Kea with all the protests, I would, I, would not, I would not come. I wouldn't spend one farthing trying to make a, a project here because Hawaii has a brand that will only lead to, you know, the destruction of my project. Yeah, have you have you read like the, uh, the article about what uh, the Maui mayor did when a when a telescope was coming up on Mauna, um, Haleakala, and he, and he had the same you know protest problem. Well, I did see that. Yeah. Yeah. You stop it right away. I mean, you stop the protest right away. Yeah, he, it's he, a he basically of said, law. "Look, this is, you know, we we have to go by the rule of law here. Here's what the law says. You know, uh, you're not following it." You know, off to the who's go you go. Yeah, and, that, and the protests were stopped. He succeeded. He succeeded. We didn't, we didn't, David Ige didn't do that. He kind of did the reverse. And uh, at the end of the day, between him and Josh Green, they, they have uh, encouraged um, the, the protest. And then we have all these people who really don't know what's going on, who also likewise encourage, you know, people come from out of state, celebrities come and encourage, becomes the cause celeb of the moment. Uh, people don't realize the effect on, on the economy and on taxes. You know, uh, so uh, what, what, what struck me to suggest this topic today was I went to the um, uh, Made in Hawaii uh, uh, fair, fair yeah. uh, over the weekend at Blaisdell. And uh, we, we, we filmed uh, you know, a lot of it and filmed people there. And the, um, you know, the people who uh, had the exhibits Paid plenty of money for those exhibits, and a lot of them were from the Big Island, and uh, some of them were uh, selling T-shirts, you know, that favorite protest at Mauna Kea. And there were a number of people. I asked them, you know, what, what about technology? Don't you want to see astronomy in the state? The answer was an answer I've heard before. The answer was, uh, we don't want technology in the state. We don't want astronomy in the state. It can all go away, as far as we're concerned. And that's what I wanted to talk to you about. Because the title that I, that I put on this is Hawaii, um, the land of extravagance and complacency. We spend, we don't pay our bills, and we are complacent about it. We, we're, we're happy enough to do that. But that's not sustainable fiscal policy, is it? Yeah, the, you know, the, th and the thing that I try to impress upon lawmakers any chance I get is that you know, every place has to have an economic engine. Okay. Don't have an engine. Uh, where is that tax revenue that you depend on coming from? Because most tax systems, including ours, de depends on the ability to create income. If you don't have income, you don't be taxed. So uh, that's especially true for us, where a lot of where you know close to half of our our government is is funded by general excise tax. That's a tax on business activity, and it's premised on the business getting income. And it's regressive. Sure, but whatever it is, if there's no income, there's no tax revenue. And we highly, we, our, our government is highly dependent on that tax revenue. So let's kind of go back to, all right, what is in our economic engine? We got tourism. Drop your voice. We tried to start some other activities. We may have a little bit of manufacturing. You know, we have some diversified agriculture. Uh, not a whole lot. Yeah, the, the Made in Hawaii fair over the weekend. It's uh, it's arts and crafts. Yeah, that's, um, that's it's, it's not serious industry. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's, it, it, it's, it highlights your you know specialty goods. Your maybe a little bit of manufacturing. Yeah. Um, but it's. It's it's basically a blip on the on the radar screen. Yep, and it's not going to make any money for for the state. It it's not really sustainable. It's family owned and it doesn't last you know but a few years in in each case. Uh, it's great fun, um, and it uh, it supports the you know a lot of the notion about uh, you know having having good relations, aloha and all that in Hawaii. But 
It's, you can't live on that. The state cannot, they can't pay the bills that way. To pay the bills, you've got to have industries that will generate lots of income, and the income will pay the tax. Right. I mean, even, uh, you know, for my own self, I'm a small businessman myself. Uh, I, I kind of got scared by the prospect of having employees because of all the mandates, uh, all of the compliance requirements, uh, all of the, you know, uh, payments you have to make, not only taxes, but uh, health care, temporary disability, all, all this kind of stuff in the, you know, in the legal mandates once you have an, once you have an employee. I mean, there seems to be a, a mentality uh, along the lines that once you are an employer, you're, you're a big, bad, fat cat. Right. You're a deep pocket. You have money that goes, you know, that's unlimited supplies of money, which is not true. Most which is, small which businesses is not true. struggle. And, uh, you know, Josh Green in the past, our lieutenant governor, has, uh, has uh, advocated for a $15 uh, minimum wage. Um, this is going to be problematic if this happens. Uh, there was a piece recently about what happens in restaurants if you have a $15 minimum wage. You, you as a patron, you still, you still tip the same way at, at 20, well, 30%. Well, and there's, also, there's also discussions on universal basic income, which, which basically means you, you are given a payment by the government just, just for being alive. Yeah. Where do you get the money? Where do you get the money from? Yeah, I, I, that's, that's a, from you. Right, sure. From, from the guy who's struggling to keep his restaurant going. Yeah. That guy. You know, so, I mean, it's, that's why I say it's, 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 it's the extravagance here is to believe that this can work and continue, that it is sustainable. It is not sustainable. And, and worse yet is that any single day we could have that wave. Any single day we could have extreme weather. And in fact, it's more likely now in climate change, which, you know, we as a world is not doing enough. And neither is Hawaii doing enough, honestly. Um, you know, and if, and if our if our industry is only one thing, tourism along the beach, wh what are we going to do with sea level rise? What are we going to do? It's already scientifically established. It's going to inundate a good part of Oahu anyway. Um, what are we going to do? What about all those buildings they built in Kaka'ako? They're they're going to be inundated too. So even that um, related industry, it's related to tourism of building uh, high priced condominiums. That's going to be at risk. Um, this, this is the way we, you know, we, we earn revenue. And let me add that the tourism doesn't necessarily result in income to the state. We don't have a REIT tax. That failed in the legislature yet again. We have the TAT. Is that enough? The, these are mostly REITs, and they're taking that money offshore and paying minimum wage here uh, for hospital corners in all the, in all the, in all the rooms. Well, in all fairness, they they are paying some hefty taxes, like uh, the TAT at ten and a quarter. I mean, who who imposes TAT uh, at at that kind of rate, along with a GET on top of that? I mean, that's you know fourteen, fifteen percent right there. How do you compare that with other? Do you think it's fair? They're the the biggest single industry in the state by far, by far. Not even a plurality. So, so, they're, so they're the biggest fat cats, and we can squeeze them, right? Well, I don't know. That I, seems I, to be I, I, what the I'm mentality just, I don't is. think we'll rely on that. Because if they go down by a wave or extreme weather, or extreme weather somewhere else, you know, where people are no longer interested in traveling to Hawaii for a vacation, that would empty our beaches, too. And if that's the case, then whatever we're earning, whatever we could earn from tourism, is gone immediately. What happens then? Same thing with, um, you know, same thing with anything that could stop tourism. But we haven't really followed through on any alternative industry at all. Um, yeah, and, and we continue to squeeze the, uh, the, the one that's there. I mean, I, I you know, have heard recent stories about, uh, you know, the city coming to uh, Waikiki and approaching some businesses there and saying, oh, um, we uh, would like some contributions from, uh, from the Waikiki hotels because you know, rail's coming here, and uh, you better play ball, otherwise bad stuff will happen. Ooh, corruption. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. There's also a piece about rail I thought was really interesting. 
if somebody now wants to make a first class and coach in rail, you pay more if you want to sit in the good seats. Well, they, they do that in other countries too, so I don't see why not. Sure, but you know, it, what it accentuates is the point where, you know, what do you think rail is going to cost you? Aside from wh what's the expectation, you know, 10 billion, 12 billion by the time it's all done and all the trouble is, is resolved, if it ever is resolved, then we got to get on the rail in the morning and come to work or whatever we're using it for. And, and how do you know what that's going to cost? Because if, this, if the city cannot afford to maintain the rail or pay the debt service on the cost of building the rail, um, it's you and me or whoever takes the rail is going to have to make up the difference. No, it's Actually, taxpayers who have to take the It's the taxpayers in general, isn't it? Even, yeah. even if we don't take the rail. Yeah. We're going to take, we're going to, we're going to have to take. The, I, the I live cost. in East Honolulu. Rail is never going to come to me. Never. And yet I'm paying. Okay. Well, there's so many problems. It just doesn't stop. And, you know, even now, if we stopped, we'd have, we, we have spent, what, at least five, six, seven billion already. Um, and we don't have a product that is even worth, worthwhile. Except for maybe some criminal investigations and we possible indictments. Well, it's yeah. a kind of an industry in its own, the legal industry, if you will. <laughs> so, <clears throat> I mean, th so th this is really not sustainable. And, um, but, I, but it, even that, they're going out of state. Right. The, the, uh, uh, the, the city council is now considering a resolution to employ, you know, California defense attorneys for the, for the, you know, the heart people at a cost of like $300,000. Yeah, send the money offshore. Send the money offshore. You tax the local people. And send the money offshore. And send the money offshore. I, I do not understand that. At the same time, you, didn't, you don't build anything that will generate greater, in, you know, industrial capacity. Uh, or um, income that can, can be taxed. Instead, you take, you take a limited population, which is actually declining, I think. A limited population, and you yes. just increase the tax on them. And then you get surprised when you see they go homeless because they can't afford the bills. Yeah, or they, or they you know, vote with their feet and rip on a plane and they're out of here. So after the break, Tom, um, I'd like to make you either a... a, a Benign uh, despot, or, or <laughs> I know you'd be benign, uh, or maybe governor or mayor, and ask you what the solutions are. If we hunker down right now, and we won't worry about political correctness, we'll just come up with um, fiscal policy, tax policy that will save the state. That'll be an exciting discussion. We'll be, are you going to hang around for this? <laughs> we'll be right back with Tom Yamachika. Thanks to our think tech underwriters and grantors. The Atherton Family Foundation, Carol Mun Lee and the Friends of ThinkTech, the Center for Microbial Oceanography Research and Education, Collateral Analytics, the Cook Foundation, Dwayne Carisu, the Hawaii Community Foundation, the Hawaii Council of Associations of Apartment Owners, Hawaii Energy, the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, Hawaiian Electric Company, Integrated Security Technologies, Galen Ho of BAE Systems, Kamehameha Schools, MW Group, the Scheidler Family Foundation, the Sydney Stern Memorial Trust, Volo Foundation, Yuriko J. Sugimura. Thanks so much to you all. Okay, well, with, with Tom Yamachika, we've identified some big problems going forward, problems that could actually, you know, ruin the state as, a, as an economic engine. Um, so let's talk about how we can, you know, improve the situation here, because we really haven't improved it over the past 20 years or so. Um, so what about, what about encouraging offshore investment to, to invest in our companies, our local businesses? Um, to build an industry here. Well, you know, you know, in order to have something to invest in, you have to have uh, you know, a product or an industry. Uh, if you have something that's kind of destined to fail, who would invest in it, right? So, yes, the, I think the answer has to be something along the lines of getting that engine going again. So, if you want to 
uh, you know, start some industries where we have natural advantages. For example, and we, we can produce premium coffee. Uh, there are places in the world that will buy premium coffee at premium prices. There's no, uh, I mean, it's possible you can um, replicate that with other uh, types of products or other types of um, you know, vegetables, uh, maybe not so much meats because that requires a lot of transportation of... Well, uh, agricultural products. Agricultural we products. haven't actually been successful at that. been a lot of talk about it, but it hasn't actually turned any significant money. So when the plantations ended, for all practical purposes, scaled up agriculture ended. Yeah, that's I think a possibility of getting it started again. The other the other possibility is you know, research agriculture, right? I mean that's kind of what we have on Kauai already. Although you know people are kind of shunning it and and uh, you know going like this. Uh, oh, oh my God, GMOs, you know. Uh, genetically modified stuff. And do we really want to do that? I mean, not necessarily, but at least we do have the luxury of being in a climate where we've got three growing seasons instead of just one, right? So, so if you want to experiment with growing crops or growing animals, uh, you know, we've got ways to do it. Uh, that are perhaps three times as efficient as any other place yeah, in the not nation. Not cows, though. Not dairy cows. Not dairy cows. We've we've squashed uh, dairies. The 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 re the re resurrection of dairies in Hawaii. We, the protesters have made them go away. Nobody would start a dairy now. You know, I remember um, we we Think Tech did a program on agriculture on the prospect of agriculture as an industry in Hawaii. We did a, a number of them, and there was a guy very wealthy investor who flew out here from the West Coast to come and see this program about developing agriculture in Hawaii. He was interested in investing and he was interested in getting his friends to invest, also well healed. And he approached me uh, in the course of this program. And he said, I want to talk to you. I want you to put me in touch with everyone who is a, you know, a prospect for an investment in agriculture in Hawaii. And I did. And he, he spent months here looking it over very carefully. And finally, we had, we had a meeting. He took me out for a little meeting. And he said, well, I've, I've looked at everything about agriculture in Hawaii. I've looked at it very carefully. I've talked to my potential co-investors. and We've decided we're going to invest in hotels. <laughs> yeah, I don't you, know exactly. You have, to, you have to have the product before you can sell it. So, um, you know, then of course you have this whole anti-tech, anti-astronomy, anti-science kind of thing. Um, it's very hard to uh, invest in, in science and technology when, you know, you can, in, this, in, the, in the case of uh, TMT, they've gone through 10 or 15 years of, of um, litigation and regulatory process and Supreme Court cases and arbitration and what have. Um, and at the end of that time, and, and they at got the end of that the time, permit. what happened to our rule of law? Well, yeah, I mean we're we're supposed to be in a society where where we have laws, we have processes, we follow these, we get to a result. Now, people say, "Oh, I don't like the result," and they and they and they you know uh, camp down on the uh, on Mauna Kea Access Road among other places. Yeah, and, and that's the complacency I'm talking about. It's complacent and it's extravagant. To say, well, you know, what, we'll take a whack at TMT. We'll try to stop it, and it'll be our little ball game, and, and we'll win. Um, but I don't think that people see that in, in a statewide context. What it'll do to the economy, what it'll do to offshore investment. You know, if you were a consortium looking to looking to organize another telescope, would you come to Hawaii? Yeah. No, the government won't protect us. If 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 one little thing goes. Goes goes wrong and some hooligans come around. Uh, if if they think their cause is just and the and the government doesn't want to interfere, Ooh, we don't hurt any, we don't want to hurt anybody, you know. Then um, then you're toast. Yeah. So so why, why would I want to invest in something that's going to become toast? 
We have no stats to know how many wouldn't come here anymore because we don't know who they are. They decided not to. Um, and my guess is that we won't see another telescope here. Whatever happens in TMT, we won't see another telescope. And Mauna Kea is really is going to be history soon enough. Um, so then the question is, well, doesn't it have a secondary effect for anyone who wants to invest in science and technology? Um, or anything answer, else for that matter. Or anything else. Yeah. And like I said, to, to get investment, you got to have a product to sell. And we need to get an economic engine running. What's our product and how do we sell it? That's what we got to ask ourselves. So here we are um, in, a, in a real pickle, so to speak, because the people at Wall Street and on the West Coast look at us and they say, you know, you guys are. You guys are not worthy. We're not going to come around. You're backwoods honkies, man. Yeah, you're backwater. That's what you are. And so how do we get, this is a hard one, maybe it deserves another, another show, another discussion. How do we get to a position where they see us differently? I mean, for example, you got, you got uh, 100 million plus going to uh, Hawaii Tourism Authority to sell hotel rooms, yeah? But how much is going to show the world that we're a worthy place to invest. How much is going uh, to show that, yes, they should bring their telescopes here. They should do their scientific development. Big Pharma should come here, surround the medical school, just as Ed Cadman wanted years ago. Yeah, happen. I mean, we, we've made advances about you know, positioning our state as a healthcare state. And you know, we, we are kind of ahead of the game already because we do have uh, very good statistics among the whole country about having healthy people. We could capitalize on that. Yeah. So that's, that's part of a product that we can develop. Uh, but we need the leadership to, uh, to get people together, make a product, and then market the darn thing. OK, I'm making you the benign despot. Uh, what do you do? You have total authority. You can, you can tell the legislature what to do. You can make laws and regulations right now today. What do you do? to improve our position, improve our image, so to speak, and make, make offshore investment come and build industry here? Well, one thing is that we got to identify you know, products that we have an, a natural advantage of. Uh, healthcare, for, for example, uh, premium agriculture, um, uh, exotic species of uh, uh, animals, plants, whatever it is, um, uh, microbes that can produce you know, wonderful chemicals like the like astaxanthin. You know, we, we get these industries targeted, we give them incentives, say grow, 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 uh, and then nurture them and, 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 you know, basically put them in the flower pot, put some water on them, and, and wait for them to grow. Once they, once they grow, then we can, you know, at least hope to get our engine running again. We have to encourage them and incentivize them. Um, so now the last question, Tom, and then we'll have to go, and that is this. This is the ghost of Christmas future. Suppose we do nothing. We have $40, $50 billion of um, unliquidated liability out there. We do not have a prospect of paying that down. It's the rail. It's uh, homeless. It's, um, gee whiz, uh, it's the ERS uh, fund. And, and anything else that might come up, I mean, if we have a storm, that's going to be a multi-million dollar effort to, uh, you know, to get back, back on track, at least. Remember Puerto Rico. Remember Puerto Rico. And Puerto Rico's in terrible shape, terrible, terrible shape now. You know, they have three governors in the past three, three months or something. It's really terrible. Um, and corruption. Corruption begins to get worse in a state that has no money to pay the bills. You know, that's the rule of thumb. So, so the question I put to you is, if we do nothing, if we just go on with our extravagance and our complacency, what happens to us? We become Puerto Rico, essentially. That's, that's what I think. Uh, if, if, you, if you don't want it to happen, if I don't want it to happen, I do something about it. And that, that entails you know, getting into the right positions, the leaders who have the vision to carry this out, uh, the people who have you know, the desire and the passion to follow what this leader says. Because, you know, we, we are going to need 
some vision and some, some following in order to get ourselves out of this mess. Jack Burns, where are you now? Exactly. <laughs> Well, thank you very much, Tom. Really enjoyed. I can't say I enjoyed, but I, I think there was a worthy discussion, and I hope we can do something else on this later. Thanks for having me on the show, Jay. Aloha, Tom.